there's a piece that I am absolutely obsessed with in the sense that as soon as I start talking about it, I can't stop. And I think it's a genius work. I think that the arts are the emotional record of history. They convey what it feels like to be in that time, in that experience, whatever the composer was experiencing, what they write in their music, puts it into a container that we then get to open at any time in the future. And as a performer, what I experience in my life goes into my performance. So the second I take that piece of music into my hands and I start to play it, it becomes my story as well. And the, the instant that the audience hears it, starts feeling something or thinking something about it, it becomes theirs too. So history then connects in the present day with so many people bringing so many different stories together. We wouldn't be able to even talk about everything that we've all seen and heard and felt in our lives, but the music gives us a place to be on the same page, yet in our own bodies, in our own emotions. And I think Hinastera, Alberto Hinastera, does this so beautifully in his violin concerto. He connects people in really interesting ways that are also visually impactful. So for example, when I walk out on stage, I'm a soloist, the whole orchestra is there, the conductor is there, no one moves. <laughs> I'm the only person who plays for the first few minutes. So everyone in the orchestra is sitting, waiting. The conductor is often with um, you know, eyes lowered, giving me the space to speak. And the first thing I say when I get out there is I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> and that grounds me. And it's such a powerful statement that any jitters the soloist might have had go right into that note. And when I play that, it vibrates. That particular note on the violin is really resonant and it vibrates into my head through my jawbone. And I feel it resonating in my chest from where the violin connects. So by drawing all that energy through the violin, also I completely connect into my instrument and my feet completely connect to the ground. So that's how I begin. As the orchestra joins, we explore all of these different tone colors and dynamics and ideas and um, perspectives together. You think that you know what a third is, for example. It's one of the most common intervals, right? But what Hinastera does is he says, yeah, you think you know it, but I'm going to present it differently. And there's a whole section that goes through that and it goes into this magical realm and then everyone comes back together and plays as hard as we can. <laughs> I think music doesn't need to be pretty. It needs to say something. It needs to make you feel something and it needs to move you through those feelings into the next feelings so that you're all in the same experience together. It's phenomenal. The second movement of this concerto is to me, one of the most brilliant examples in the repertoire of understated theatricality in the purpose, in the service of music, in the service of communication. It is written for 22 soloists in the orchestra. So not 22 people walking on stage in front of the orchestra. It's 22 of us placed all around the stage, one person from um, a section. So. It's um, no one duplicates each other and it's big chamber music with space in between all of us. When we rehearse it, usually everyone who's not playing leaves the stage, takes a break, has a coffee. In the concert, everyone is there. And the fact that there are people on stage not playing and waiting in between the colleagues who are playing the solo lines, it's the sort of feeling of a walking on a tightrope and it's the feeling of being connected across distance 
but with the attention of the orchestra. So the orchestra becomes audience, orchestra becomes soloist. Audience is now connected with the audience on stage. So in a sense, although we're all far apart, we're all really knitted close together in the energy of the performance. It starts with double bass, which is one of the lowest string instruments. <laughs> and the bass has the first few notes. And then shortly thereafter, I enter and I take it up pretty high, like almost as high as the violin goes. It doesn't stay there, it goes up higher. And the whole piece, that whole movement is just weaving in and out of emotion. The beats are really not um, dictated to the audience. It's all feeling, it's all gesture. The third movement enters the scene and um, it's just an exploration of um, sort of magical sounds, a little bit like ASMR, <laughs> but it also is full of percussion and I personally love percussion. So hearing all of the ways that Hinostera um, interact with uh, the percussion section, which fills the entire back of the stage, is really fun for me. There are a lot of techniques that I've never done before in this piece. It was written in the 1960s, a time of conflict and tension and beauty. And I think all of that is in the music. It ends with a perpetual motion where I play 16th notes for three pages. It's just, you open the music and you're like, okay, this is what we're doing. Um, as loud as I can too. So it just keeps going like that until the end when everyone slams into the final chord together. Take a listen. It's Alberto Ginastero's Violin Concerto on my album Eclipse. <laughs> 